Hey, what's up guys? Matt here with Fix Anything Save Money. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to adjust the carburetor on this Still BG86 leaf blower. And we're gonna be using this great little carburetor adjustment kit that Hypa sent me. And we're gonna open it up and show you guys everything on here. So on this leaf blower, you can see here, This is where we would adjust our carburetor on the high end, on the low end, and then this right here, right in there, is our idle speed. So we're gonna just walk you through this real quick and then I'm gonna cut the video, take it outside, and show you what the adjustment actually looks like. So now we could show you this kit by Hypa. You can see you get some brushes here. And I'll put a link in the description on where you can pick up this kit. Hypa is, uh, they produce parts for small engines. They have chainsaw blades, they have carburetors, uh, air filters, you name it. They pretty much have it for small engines. So like I said, I'll put a link in the description on where you could pick this up. Okay, and then we'll show you all these different little tools. So really, what I've from the carburetors that I've ran into, the two most common that you're going to use to adjust the high and low end are this minus shaped, which is pretty much just a tiny little flathead screwdriver. And then this splined, this fits a lot of carburetors. So on this one in particular, you can see it's all the way, the carburetor is underneath this plastic cover, but I actually lifted this cover off to see which tool you need to use. And I saw that it was this just little minus shaped uh, this little flathead screwdriver to adjust that and then to adjust the idle it's just a Phillips head so we'll cut the video I'll take this outside and I'll show you the different adjustments um, the first thing we're gonna do just so you know we're gonna adjust the idle so we're gonna start the engine get it warmed up get it to normal operating temperature and then we're going to adjust the idle so that it's idling flat and we're happy with the idle speed and then we're going to adjust the low end and the high end of the carburetor. So we'll cut the video and take you outside and show you that. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay guys, so we're back in the shop. Hopefully that little demonstration helped you out. Um, like I said, I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can pick up this carb adjustment tool that Hypa makes. Also be sure to check out um, their online store on Amazon. They have a bunch of different small engine uh, parts and tools. So be sure to check them out. And uh, yeah, just be sure when you're adjusting these, you know, like I said, you start off with the engine warm. You don't want any like, if the engine's cold, it's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to tell anything. So just make sure the engine's warmed up and then start out if it's not idling correctly or it's stalling out without you pulling the trigger, you're gonna wanna adjust your idle screw first, make sure it's idling fine. And then when you go to pull the trigger, if you hear it bogged down, you're gonna wanna adjust this low setting, rotating it clockwise to increase your RPM. That should get rid of your any bogging that's happening when you pull the trigger. The goal is just to have smooth, even, constant power as you pull the trigger. And then, like I said in the video, the high setting, um, you really just wanna, you don't want the RPMs too high on these. They do make um, tachometers that you could put on the engine and you could actually tell what the RPM is. And then you could look up the specs for the engine to see what the max RPM for your engine is. And then you just wanna make sure you set it to the max or below the max. I always err on, just going lower than you think, just so you don't do any damage to your engine. So yeah, guys, that being said, like I said, I'll put a link in the description for this. I'll also put a link in the description for that tachometer. And if you guys have any questions at all, be sure to reach out in the comment section. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. It was kind of hard to hear the engine noises in the video, but when you do it in person, you should be able to hear you know, your engine noises a lot easier when you're actually right next to your engine. So yeah, guys, that pretty much does it. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, be sure to like this video if it helped you out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.